That's a lot of people, a lot more than GCR, so I'm trying to do icebreaker real fast. Um, my name's Jordan, and like CJ said, I live in Gallup Police, Ohio, but I grew up in Columbus. Um, I grew up in the suburbs, and then I slowly transitioned to the city, because that's where like all the drugs and stuff were. Um, so I used to be a heroin and an opiate addict. I loved to drink and get drunk, so I was a drunkard and an idolater. But today, I'm standing before you as a testimony of God's grace and his love. And God's love doesn't pretend. It doesn't edit our stories so the most painful memories didn't happen. He repurposes those to the moments that we treasure most to glorify him. And that's what I'm here uh, to do by sharing my testimony with you. So I always wanted to blame getting kicked off wrestling or my brother or my friends for getting started using drugs, but it was really, it was me. I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to rebel against my parents who tried to raise me the best that they could. And God's word tells us that we're born with a deceitful heart. Jeremiah tells us that, and I really embrace that. I love to sin. That's why we all sin, because we love it. So I was already a full-blown heroin addict by 18, and uh, a particular day um, then, it took my dad 45 minutes to wake me up. I was passed out on the floor. I just overdosed. Um, I remember he finally woke me up, and I could tell God is real because there's no way I should be alive here before you today because I've overdosed over 20 times. Um, and I'm not lying. I can vividly remember tons of these moments where this happened. Um, right after that, uh, my dad took me to work. I immediately got on the bus, rode all the way home, found my drugs he threw in the trash can, and started using again. So, Needless to say, I was hooked, and my life pretty much went like this, rehab, relapse, repeat, over and over again, the same cycle. Um, if you read the book of Judges, that's what my life looked back like. You know, I repented, thought I was repenting, and then went right back to the same thing. So at a particular point in my journey, I listened, or I landed into a Christian discipleship program, but uh, I met Jesus there, I think, like a knowledge, a little bit, of a taste of him, but they were filled with false teaching. And one thing they taught us there was that you could lose your salvation and that really messed with my identity in Christ. So it was constantly like a work-based type salvation. I have to please God to get in, where that's completely incorrect. The Bible teaches us that who is faithful uh, will finish the work that he has started in you. Uh, Paul talks about that. Um, so in reality, if people say they're not saved anymore, they weren't really saved in the first place. I firmly believe in that. So <clears throat> they also had the word of faith teaching there where I just believe hard enough and God will take my sin away where God's word says if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live so it's me and God smashing sin and that's beautiful I like it I like mortifying sin that's such a cool word so anyhow uh, I worked there as a counselor uh, but deep down, like I said, I wasn't, I don't feel like I was really saved yet. I was drinking and using with another staff member there, teaching guys about Jesus, but false teaching about Jesus. So eventually, uh, I ended up in a, like a secular treatment center in Gallup Police, Ohio, where uh, CJ was talking about, and I met Pastor John, and that's where I got into a church that really preached the Bible, taught us to daily repent and believe the gospel. So I feel like through his uh, preaching, in God's word, obviously, that's where I got saved, because God's word makes you wise unto salvation. Um, so I landed in this place called Freedom House, where uh, I grew as a disciple of Jesus. Uh, it was hard, but uh, I grew, you know. And then this was about two years ago, something very tragic happened, and, and my brother got hit by a car and was killed. Um, and that was a turning point to where you know, I got to actually evangelize to him before he died, but I still seen that life can be a real struggle, uh, even in the beginning of you being saved, because sa uh, sanctification is like, you're going like this, but you're constantly going up, but it's a roller coaster getting up to the top until we meet God. So, in that point, um, you know, I got to witness to him, like I said, but I was able to be there for my family. <clears throat> but after that, um, 
I was in school. Uh, I met the loveliest woman ever, Annie, and she's here with me. Um, you know, um, everything was going well. Uh, I was trying to juggle all these things with school, work, church, her, and I started to push God to second or third. And this is where I'm talking about sanctification is kind of a process. So I took a job in Columbus to try to push forward marrying Annie uh, to get a good job with insurance and all those things. Uh, but I feel like I was still in God's plan just because he needed to teach me a lesson that I can't force things, right? So I made a lot of compromises. I let my old sin patterns uh, start again to where I started small, and then I ended up drinking, then I ended up using drugs. So after about uh, six months of that, um, my mom called me out on it, and Annie had a meeting with the pastor, and they just wanted to help me. God used both my mom, her, and Pastor John to lead me to the refuge. So that's where I'm at now. So... With that, I remember uh, writing Annie a letter and telling her these are three things that I wanted to concentrate while I was here at the refuge. One was to be with Jesus, two was to become like Jesus, and three was to do what he did. So I want to talk about these three things. So number one, to be with Jesus, and that happened through Bible reading. So they teach us to read the Bible at the refuge. Like, that's what we do. We read the Bible and love and treasure God's word most. So I started off small. Uh, in the Gospels, reading like small little chunks, and now I do a larger uh, Bible reading plan, but that was so detrimental because I could hardly see Jesus in the Old Testament, but now I can. I just see him everywhere. Like Jesus is there, God is there, like all those three things, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all over the Bible, and it's amazing. So number two uh, is to become like Jesus, and that happens through repentance, uh, there's a Puritan quote I really love. It's called, it says, wash me, Savior, lest I die, because I have to be killing sin or it will be killing me. So every day uh, I ask God to search me, and then I name that sin, whatever he reveals to me that's in my heart, and then both of us conquer that sin, and it's beautiful. And number three, to do what Jesus did. So if you want to experience the life of Jesus, you have to adopt the lifestyle of Jesus. So I try to love God and people. I pray daily. Sometimes I fast because that's really hard. I practice silence and solitude. I love and obey. I live simply and I give. I do, do all these things inside of a local church. I can't talk about that enough. We have to be in a local church. So it's hard. Am I perfect at it? Absolutely not. But it's the most amazing thing I've ever done. And I continue uh, to want to do every single day of my life because it's what I desire most now. I desire God more than anything. So God is real. His way is better. And I plan on keep using what I learned in the refuge here to be a true disciple of Jesus, completely sold out to make disciples as our Heavenly Father commands us. And that's it. Thank you.